So we're going to talk about exponent properties right now, um, specifically properties with um, taking products of powers, power of powers, and power of products. So I'm going to go through the examples and explain why uh, each of these powers work the way they do. So first, we'll talk about the product of powers property. In words, it says to multiply powers with the same base, add their exponents. So we see our examples here. I'm zooming in. Um, we have 4 squared times 4 to the third power. What they're doing is they're doing 4 squared plus 3. So the 2 plus 3 in the exponent. So we're basically, if, if we have the same base, we add the exponents. And then that simplifies in exponent form to 4 to the fifth power. Now, in algebra with just uh, variables instead of numbers, we have a to the m times a to the n. They still have the same base. So when, when would they have the same base? We keep the base and we add the exponents. So this, this becomes a to the m plus n. Now let's look at why this works. And I'm going to show you guys with the number example, but it will work for the variable one too. So if we take 4 squared right here, I can just write that out as 4 times 4. So I'll write that out as 4 times 4. And then this is being multiplied by 4 cubed. And that's the same thing as 4 times 4 times 4. Okay. Well, the order of multiplication does not matter. So I don't need these parentheses. So I can just rewrite this as 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Well, we know that since there are five 4s being multiplied, 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, we can rewrite this in exponent form as just 4 to the fifth power, because the base is 4, the number that's being repeatedly multiplied is 4, and the exponent is 5 because there are five 4s being multiplied. The next property is the power of a power property. And in words, it says, to find a power of a power, multiply the exponents. So the numbers, it says, 4 to the 6th power, that entire quantity to the third power is just the same thing as 4 to the 6 times 3 power, and 6 times 3 is 18. So in exponent form, this simplifies to 4 to the 18th power. And then with variables, it is a to the m power, and then that quantity raised to the n power and all we do is multiply m and n, and then we get a to the m times n power. So let's see why that works. So I'm going to rewrite 4 to the 6th power to the 3rd power as 4 to the 6th times 4 to the 6th times 4 to the 6th. So that looks like this. 4 to the 6th power times 4 to the 6th power times 4 to the 6th power. Well, we know from our last... Uh, power property that we just went over, that if I have the same base right here, then all I have to do is keep that base and then add the exponents here. So this would simplify to 4 to the 6 plus 6 plus 6, but we have, we have repeated addition, so repeated addition means I could use multiplication. So this is the same thing as 4 to the 3 times 6, because there are three sixes being added, and that's the same thing as four to the 18th in exponent form. So this is why this um, power property works. The last power property we're gonna talk about in this video is the power of a product property. And in words, it says, to find a power of a product, find the power of each factor and multiply. So we have the quantity three times two in parentheses to the fifth power, and we can rewrite this as three to the fifth power times two to the fifth power. So basically what we're kind of doing is it's almost like the distributive property. The, this exponent goes to each of these bases inside here. So everything that's being multiplied gets a gets that exponent right here. Same thing with the uh, algebraic terms. We have a times b, and that quantity is being taken to the m power. So if you think of it like distributing, the m goes here and here. So we get a to the m power times b to the m power. Now, once again, we're going to talk about why that works. So I have 3 times 2 to the 5th power. Well, if I wrote that out, I'd get 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 and then 
times 3 times 2. So we know that the order doesn't matter in multiplication. So what I can do is I can just rewrite these things that are being multiplied in a different order. So I'm going to write all the 3's being multiplied and then all the 2's being multiplied. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 3's and then same thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 and then times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And now, since I'm multiplying five threes, the base is three, the exponent would be five, because there's five of these threes. So I can rewrite this as three to the fifth power times, and then same thing here, there's five twos being multiplied, so that's gonna be two to the fifth power. And that's what we get here. So this is why that property works. All right, so for our first example here, we're gonna simplify uh, this exponential product right here. So I have two to the fourth power times two to the fifth power. Well, we can see that both of these uh, things that are being multiplied have the same base of two. So when I'm multiplying two things with the same base, uh, all I have to do is add the exponents. So this becomes two to the four plus five power, and then four plus five is obviously nine. So we get two to the ninth power. And then right here, if we want to leave it in exponential form, we just leave it like this. If I want to simplify this out totally, I would just do two to the ninth power, which is 512. Now you could do that out, obviously, but I just knew that one off the top of my head. And that's going to be the answer there. For the next example, we see negative 5 times the quantity negative 5 to the 6th power. Now, this one might be a little bit tricky, but if you remember, this number right here, negative 5, is assumed to be to the first power. Anytime we have a number that does not have an exponent, it is assumed to be the first power. So I can rewrite this as negative 5 to the first power. Now I have the same base, okay, so all I have to do is add the exponents. So this is going to be negative 5 to the 1 plus 6th power, and that's going to be negative 5, the quantity, to the 7th power. So this is our answer in exponential form. And once again, if we wanted to do it out, we could just multiply it out. So if I use a calculator, I can type in negative 5 in parentheses and then take that to the 7th power. And we get our answer right here, which is negative 78,125. So this simplifies to negative 78,125. And this is our answer for part B. For our last example here, we don't have numbers as our base. We have a variable as our base. But that's not going to make any difference at all. It still follows the same rule. So since, since we have the same base here of x, I can just rewrite this as x to the 3 plus 7 power. And then this is just going to stay x to the 10th power. And that's all we can do. There's no number we can evaluate until I know what uh, my x value is. So this is as simplified as possible. All right, so now for this example, I have three to the fourth power, and then that entire quantity is being taken to the third power. If we ever have a power being taken to another power, all I have to do is multiply these two exponents, and then I get my simplified answer. So this is, so all I have to do here is do three times four. So this is gonna be three to the four times third power, and then that's gonna be equal to three to the 12th power. And then this is my final answer in exponent form, but if I wanted to simplify it, I would just go to my calculator, and I type in 3 to the 12th power, which would give me 531,441. And that's our answer for part A. For our second example, we have a variable as our base here, but that's not going to change what we do. So we have w to the 5th power, and then this entire quantity being taken to the 4th power. So all I'm going to do, again, is just multiply 5 times 4. So this is going to be w to the 5 times 4 power, which equals w to the 20th power. And this is simplified. All right, now, for this example, in part A, we have uh, two things in our parentheses being multiplied by each other, and then that entire quantity is being taken to the third power here. So um, the two things that are being multiplied by each other are actually called factors. So uh, we technically need to what I've been calling, it's like the distributive property 
Um, we need to, in an air quote, distribute this 3 to the x and to the 2. So we're basically going to end up taking 2 to the third power and then x to the third power here. So I do like drawing the arrows. It helps me. I hope it helps you. So this is going to be 2 to the third power times x to the third power. But this is not simplified because I have 2 to the third power. An expression that has exponents in it is simplified when there are um, only one of each variable, all exponents are positive, and all of the number components are simplified. 2 to the third power is not simplified because I know I can uh, take this a little bit further, and I know that 2 to the third power is equal to 8. So I can rewrite this as 8x to the third power, and this is my final simplified answer. For part B, we're going to do something similar here. This 2 right here is going to go, um, we're going to take 3x and y all to the second power here. So all the factors. So 2x and y. And this can be rewritten as 3 squared, x squared, y squared. Okay, well, I can simplify 3 squared, which is 9. So I can rewrite this as 9x squared, y squared. And that is the uh, simplified expression for part B. All right, so for the last example in this video, we have a word problem. One gigabyte GB of computer storage or cell phone storage or any sort of device storage in this case is two to the 30th power bytes. The storage details of a computer are shown. How many bytes of total storage space does the computer have? So if we look here, we have 64 gigabytes total and we have 16 gigabytes of free space, but this is not really uh, relevant here because it's asking us about our total storage base, okay? So we have 64 gigabytes, okay? And we know that there are two to the 30th power bytes in one gigabyte. So since I'm dealing with uh, an exponential term with a base of two, I wanna see if I can rewrite this 64 with a base of two. And turns out we can because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. This does equal 64. We can test it out. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4 again. 2 times 2 is 4 again. In this case, 4 times 4 is 16. And then 16 times 4 is equal to 64. So I know that this repeated uh, twos being multiplied is equal to 64, but I can rewrite this as an exponent. So this is gonna be equal to two to the sixth power because there are six twos being multiplied. So now we wanna figure out the total amount of uh, storage space on this computer. And the total space is 64 gigabytes, which we know is two to the six gigabytes. And all I have to do is multiply this by how many bytes are in a gigabyte, so two to the 30th power, and, that's, and then I can get my answer. So here I have 2 to the 30th power times 2 to the 6th power, right here. And then all I have to do is I have to add the 30 and the 6, because I have the same base. So it becomes 2 to the 30 plus 6 power, which is 2 to the 36th power. And we can leave our answer in exponent form, but if we wanted to get an idea of how uh, big this is, we can go over to our calculator and type in two to the 36 power. And we get some big number. This is scientific notation. Um, we'll learn about this coming up soon. But anyway, this is the uh, final number answer in exponential form for this word problem, but we do like to answer word problems with word answers. So I'm gonna write the computer has two to the 36th power bytes of total storage. So this is our word answer for our word problem.